Every defense is associated with a disease, and we'll now discuss some of the diseases of exaggerated defenses. This occurs because every defense is a benefit which is associated with some cost, and the costs are expressed when the defense is exaggerated or when it is inappropriately deployed. They range from mild things like itching and discomfort to death through organ failure triggered by septic shock. So let's discuss immune defenses, coagulation and thrombosis, tissue repair, fuel reallocation and defense from starvation, defenses against dehydration and volume depletion, avoidance of pathogens, and avoidance of predators. So immune defenses have diseases that are associated with them that include autoimmunity, allergy, asthma, septic shock, anaphylaxis, and other immunopathologies. Their increased incidence in the modern world indicates important contributions from environmental factors. The design issue is this. The systems are designed with feed-forward loops with positive feedback. This is done to provide a rapid, massive emergency response to infection. That's associated with sepsis. And with toxins, which leads to anaphylaxis. But this creates these vulnerabilities to unmanageable runaway processes. And that is why things like sepsis and anaphylaxis hit so quickly and cause such massive symptoms. Sepsis that has a cascading series of failures in multiple organs, it resembles the power failures in continental-wide power nets. The failure of one component increases the chance that the remaining components will fail. Coagulation and thrombosis are both very good defensive reactions to wounding, but they have associated diseases as well. So they are defenses against vascular injury, and they contain the risk of embolism that leads to ischemia and infarction. To be effective, clotting has to be fast to avoid hemorrhage. The speed is achieved by positive feedback that amplifies the response. Positive feedback creates two kinds of vulnerabilities, an excessive response and vicious cycles. Thus, inflammation promotes clotting, leading to embolism, and embolism promotes inflammation, producing cascading local circulatory failure. So this is part of the gradual component of the development of heart disease. Tissue repair is essential. We evolved stem cells to do it. And the design of our tissue repair mechanisms contains vulnerabilities to both fibrosis and to neoplasia or to cancer. Tissue repair replaces lost cells, that's regeneration, and it rebuilds lost extracellular matrix, including the base basement membranes of the extracellular matrix. Excessive regeneration combined with oncogenic mutations causes tumor growth. And after the age of about five, interestingly, repair of extracellular matrix produces fibrosis and that leads to scarring. But that does not happen in children younger than five. Fibrosis can also lead to a loss of organ function, for example, with liver cirrhosis or pulmonary sar sarcoidosis in the lung. Fuel reallocation is essential for managing our physiology and for managing things like starvation, but it has associated diseases. Though, though those diseases uh, elicit costs that rarely had to be paid until modern times. Fuel reallocation supports shifting physiological priorities, for example, during infection or pregnancy, but in the context of obesity and chronic inflammation, these same processes can lead to type 2 diabetes. Our ability to store calories as fat created a vulnerability to obesity when continuous unlimited food is encountered. Similar issues arise with dehydration and volume depletion. We need to be well hydrated, but the mechanisms that regulate our water content also contain vulnerabilities. Homeostatic control of water and sodium is done with endocrine mechanisms 
that evolved in environments that were chronically deficient in sodium chloride, table salt. Dramatic increases in salt consumption stress our physiological systems that regulate sodium. Because sodium has a key role in the control of blood volume, the result has been an increased incidence in hypertension. We have also evolved defense mechanisms to avoid predators and pathogens, and with, of course, then to avoid the diseases associated with those pathogens. We avoid pathogens by detecting proxies of high microbial density, smells, tastes, and sights. Those are the things we think are disgusting. We avoid rotten food, feces, and humans who are just suffering from contagious disease. When exaggerated, such defenses can produce obsessive compulsive disorder. So that's a disease of an exaggerated defense. We avoid predators by staying away from open spaces and unfamiliar surroundings. That is very useful if you're in a high danger environment like the Serengeti. However, when exaggerated or inappropriately deployed, such behavior can produce agoraphobia. So to summarize, the exaggeration of every type of defense produces a characteristic associated disease. Feed forward loops and positive feedback are part of the design of these systems because they provide a rapid emergency response. But those very things create vulnerability to an unmanageable runaway process like septic shock and embolism. The design of tissue repair makes us vulnerable to cancer and fibrosis. The design of fuel reallocation makes us vulnerable to type 2 diabetes. The design of water and sodium control makes us vulnerable to hypertension. And the design of pathogen and predator avoidance makes us vulnerable to obsessive compulsive disorder and agoraphobia.